This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now, this lecture is on the use of computers in accounting. Um, and again, I do hope you've got the lecture notes in front of you, uh, because this is another chapter where there are no numbers involved. And so I'm, I'm not simply going to read every word to you. I'll go through and summarise, but you must read the chapter again properly. Uh, and as always, ask in the Ask the Tutor forum if um, anything isn't clear or if I haven't made it clear in the lecture. But until now, uh, when we've been going through our accounting, we've been doing it all, what you might call, manually. Uh, as it used to be done years ago when all the entries were made by hand. And it's important we did, did do that because you are tested that you do understand double entry, uh, even though, as I'll explain as we go through, these days just about everybody uses computers to do the accounting, and so you're not actually seeing T accounts, you're not actually seeing the debits, the credits, uh, and many of the people doing the simplest jobs in accounting don't even need to understand debits and credits. Uh, but it is built around the debit credit system, and you are tested on that, which is why you must make sure you're happy with all the earlier chapters, as though we were entering everything by hand. However, as I've said, these days, uh, I think almost everyone uses computers uh, for the accounting function. And so, a few headings here, which I hope will make sense, which we need to go through. Uh, first of all, the benefits. Now, to some extent, some of these certainly should be very obvious, but even so, we just run down the list. Um, first of all, fewer errors. Uh, you may remember in the earlier chapters, um, errors created because, oh, you debited with 100 and accidentally credited with only 10. Well, that won't happen with a computer, uh, because the computer, you enter 100 and it automatically will do the debit and the credit. Now, that's not to say there can't still be errors, for instance, you need to enter 100, but you only type in 10. OK, it'll debit 10, it'll credit 10, but it's obviously wrong. Um, so there can still be errors. Or you can, um, you want to credit cash debit purchases, but somehow you tell the computer that we're crediting cash debiting rent. It does what it's told. So, doesn't mean there aren't any errors, but certainly there will be fewer errors. Uh, faster processing, I think that's fairly obvious. Uh, the more work is being done by the computer, the faster it's going to be, and particularly reporting. Um, that if you want um, a summary of what we've paid in rent, for example, over the year, Instead of having to go through by hand and start adding things up, the computer can produce the report virtually instantly. Uh, backups. Uh, this is a big benefit, to be honest. In the days when everything was done by hand and recorded in books, if you lost to those books, if there was a fire or something, then we had a huge problem. Whereas with computers, of course, because everything's on the computer, we can take backups regularly, copies regularly, stored on uh, the disk somewhere, uh, that provided we are taking backups, providing we are storing them separate from the computer, then if the computer packs up, or if the computer gets stolen, or if there's a fire, we can still retrieve all the data. Integration. Another a slightly less obvious but very important one. Uh, 
um, uh, we're going to be sending invoices to customers. Now in the old days we'd have somebody type, when it's by hand, we'd have somebody typing out the invoice. They'd then give the invoice to the person who um, recorded the transactions and they'd be copying the amounts on the invoice. Well of course computers can bypass that. We still need somebody to put in the information for the invoice but the talk on the invoice the computer can then automatically do the debits credits. It's not two separate people having to do two separate jobs. Or when we calculate wages. We can have the computer calculate the wages for us. You know, we put in how many hours worked and whatever. But when the wages have been calculated, instead of somebody else then copying it into the accounting system, the computer can automatically put the same amount in. Which again, speeds everything up, fewer errors and so on. Uh, authorization. When things have been done by hand, and you know, you've got these ledgers, who's to check who's writing, who's entering things? Okay, you can keep them locked away and only certain people have the key and so on. Uh, but with computers, all right, we'll have lots of accounting personnel, but they'll need passwords to enter the system. And so that they can only have the password if they're authorised to actually make entries. Different people, different passwords, according to what jobs they're entitled to do in the system. Uh, and finally, slightly related, transaction logging. Because you give uh, everybody different passwords, and depending on their password, that affects what they're entitled to enter, the computer can also keep a record of who's been in the system, what have they done, when did they do it. So, for instance, if, if you see that somebody has been accessing the system in the middle of the night, you know, with the sort of business where that doesn't normally happen, then it might raise a problem. You might investigate and see, well, who was it? What password was it? Has their password been stolen? Or were they making entries they shouldn't have made? And that sort of thing. So all of those are benefits from using computers that didn't used to exist in the days when everything was by hand. Uh, over the page there's a heading data entry. How, uh, how is data actually entered into the system? When you send an invoice, we need to record the amount. When we receive cash, we need to record it and so on. Well, how is the data entered? Well, obviously, some of it will be entered manually by hand. Somebody sat at a keyboard typing in. And of course, from what I said earlier, that is where there still can be errors. People mistype. And even though debits, credits are the same amount, if the wrong figures typed in, Clearly an error. But the certain data, no choice. There has to be somebody sat there with a the keyboard. However, there are quite a lot of places where there can be what we call automatic entry. Oh, think of a supermarket. In the old days, uh, the person at the cash machine would have to enter everything by hand onto the, the cash machine, effectively a computer terminal. But these days, like almost every shop um, uses barcodes that is entered automatically. Um, they just scan the barcode and the amount goes in straight away. 
and so it reduces errors and of course it's faster. Or I have a given example there, um, inventory movements. We need to keep check on our inventories obviously, think back to the chapter on inventory. But if all our goods have barcodes or something they're called the RFID tags, same idea, it can be read electronically, um, then we can keep track of what's coming in and going out automatically without somebody having to type it in. Uh, database entry. Well, I'll give you a very obvious example of what I mean here. When everything was done manually and we sent an invoice to Mrs. X, we'd have to type in the name, the address, uh, exactly what they'd bought, the price of it, and so on. But all that can be speeded up enormously. We can have a database, a file already there with all our customers on, with their name, their address. So instead of typing it all out again, we just type the name and the address is all filled in. Equally the goods. Instead of having to type out uh, in great detail exactly what we bought, we could give our goods code numbers. Just type a code number and immediately the full description appears. The price, rather than us having to look up, oh, what's the price of this item they bought? We could have a database, a file on the computer, listing everything we sell and its price. So again, once we've told it what we've sold, the computer can automatically fill in the price. And finally, one I mentioned before as a benefit, integration. That instead of one person typing up an invoice, giving it to another person who types the amount into the accounting software, it can be done automatically. It's all linked. The software where, which we use to write, uh, prepare invoices can automatically transfer the amount of the invoice to the debits and credits. Uh, finally, just a terminology, transaction processing system or software. Uh, we call it TPS and the S is system or software, they mean the same. Um, this is the, the name we give to all of the software that's involved in the accounting. So not just the debit credit software, we also have software for preparing invoices, we'll have software uh, for calculating wages and so on. Software for keeping inventory records. Well, as I've already mentioned, they're all integrated. A figure from uh, one bit from the wages software can be automatically entered in the accounting software. Well, the whole system uh, is regarded, uh, is called TPS, the Transaction Processing Software. Uh, finally, since I did say have the notes in front of you, you will have noticed I jumped over one heading, uh, which is the distinction between what we call desktop software oops, and cloud accounting. And you may well be aware of uh, both of these from work. Uh, but desktop uh, accounting, uh, when the computers first came in, okay, we bought computers, they, they sat on the desks in the office, uh, and all the uh, software, we'd buy the software, or a big company have it specially written, but the software sat on our computers in our offices. Uh, they could be linked, they could be wired together, because we several people need to use the software, but we had the software sat on our desks. 
Much more commonly these days is something called cloud accounting, where the accounting programs are held somewhere else. Maybe we hold them somewhere else, or maybe we pay another company to hold them. And all the software and the records are held somewhere else. And we access them from our desk over the internet. So we can do it whenever, wherever we are. If we need, uh, if we go um, abroad and still need to access it, no problem. Over the internet, we access the central place, if you like. And all the software is there. And all our records are there. And that is now much more common. It solves all the backups problem because uh, instead of needing to back up all of our computers on the desks, everything's held in one place and that can be backed up automatically at regular intervals. Uh, as I already said, it means we can access it from anywhere. We're not stuck at just one specific desk all the time. Uh, updates. Software is regularly updated. Desktop software, we need to pay for updates and make sure we install them. Uh, with cloud computing, given all the software is in one central place, it can be or still having to pay, but it can be automatically updated. Um, we don't have to do anything. Now, before anybody uh, asks or wonders, uh, one danger, of course, if you're accessing over the internet, is what happens if the internet connection goes down. Well, uh, not always, but what's very common is although all the software, all the data is held in one place centrally, a copy is kept on our own computer. And so if the internet goes down, we can still work on our computer, but as soon as we're back connected to the internet, automatically it's all updated in the cloud, in the central place. Good, well, as again I have said a couple of times, there's only two pages there. Read them carefully. Check it agrees with what you thought I said. And, of course, if it raises any questions, if anything isn't clear, do ask in the Institute of Forum.